One perfect gear setup does not exist. No, it does not. It will differ from person to person and from one high to another, but I have a dream or at least a dream setup for my big three that I would change if I were to choose freely without any limitations of money. Today it is all about those items, what they are and why I would choose that specific gear in front of anything else. Now, let's do this. I didn't do much changes to my gear setup the past season, but to be honest, I'm quite happy with the choices of gear I have made so far. But I also spent a little bit of time thinking about what to do next. My base weight in full comfort is at the moment 5.4 kilo, but I would like it so much to be more close to the 10 pounds or the 4.5 kilo that is the goal weight for any ultra light hiker, but with maintained or increased comfort and safety. I would never skimp on comfort or safety just to save a couple of grams, and I'd rather hike in comfort than to achieve those 10 pounds. That said, I believe it is totally possible to achieve both, and today I will go through the changes I would make to my big three to get closer to my goal if I had the money to spend. And by big three I mean the tent, the backpack and the sleet system, the three pieces of gear in your backpack that influence the weight the most, hence the name big three. Starting with the sleep system and now I already own one of the best pads out there, the Neo Air X Therm. A super warm and great pad at 569 grams and the 6.9 in R value will take you through any possible scenario and keep you warm no matter what. And for me who is a frislut, in pure Swedish a cold sleeper, that is a great thing to have. But the Ectherm is not the most comfortable pad out there and it takes some time getting used to on every hike. And I often wake up in the middle of the night with pain in my hips and I twist and turn a lot while sleeping. So my goal here is not to save weight but to increase the comfort. And since I already own a seated summit pad, the insulated XT with an R value of 3.5, it is way too cold for me, but it is a super comfortable pad. And I really wanted to go for another Sea to Summit pad, but the winter edition they have, the XT Extreme, is way too heavy at almost one kilo for the large version. Not an option. So the one I ended up putting on my wish list and the one I would like to add to my dream setup is the Nemo Tensor Alpine in size long wide. This pad uses the same quilted type of shape as the C2 Summit pads, so it will be a similar good comfort as the XT Insulated and the Extreme pads. And with an R value of 4.8, it will keep me warm. But the big downside is the weight. 690 grams, so it adds 121 grams to my base weight. Well, well, comfort is important. When it comes to the quilt, I now use the Cumulus 300 quilt, which is a 250 quilt with 50 grams overfill that weighs in at 577 grams. It is a great quilt, but with a comfort rating of plus 3 degrees Celsius, it is a little bit too cold for me and I often have to put on my down jacket to stay warm. So I wanted to change to something warmer and at the same time save me a little bit of weight. After using a quilt for some time now, I know that I will manage without the zipper in the footbox and go for a closed one. The quilt of choice will therefore be the Enlightenment Equipment Enigma 20 degree quilt in size regular regular with a closed footbox and a draft color at 545 grams. It has 100 grams more fill in it and in a higher quality than 950 fill, so it will be a warmer alternative and with a comfort rating of minus one degree Celsius. Perfect. With these two changes to my slip system and for a total cost of 7,000 Swedish crowns or about $600 in the US, I will actually add 89 grams to my base weight, but I will then also add to my comfort and to the warmth. But it is crazy expensive. Is it worth it? Hmm. The backpack I've been using for the past two years is the Adam Plus backpack in a 50 liter version in X-Pack VX21. And that one has been great, absolutely great. I've had no problems using it, no problems with the wear and tear, and it looks almost brand new. 
but I wanted something lighter and more waterproof and after talking to Adam Pax and they can't seem to provide me with a scene taped solution it had something to do with the how they manufacture the backpacks so I was forced to look elsewhere for my dream setup. Beside the weight and being more waterproof I still wanted a frame pack for a good comfort and the one I ended up deciding to be my next pack if I had the money is the Z-Packs or called Ultra 60 liter pack. The size is about the same as I have now and 47 liters in the main and the reason not going for the 40 or the 50 liter is to have the extra space should I need it for the early spring or late fall hikes when you need to bring a little bit of extra clothes or gear to stay warm and I don't want a bunch of extra backpacks uh, for the different kinds of trips and hikes that I do. There can be only one and with the roll top closure you can easily adjust to the load. I also like the different kinds of frame they have and that will let me have a bit of air between my back and the pack for a less sweaty back. Now the arc hole is seam taped and highly water resistant and when it comes to the fabric the Ultra 200 I can just quote Dan Durston when he says the Ultra 200 material is vastly better than hybrid DCF for a pack and that the Ultra 200 is the no-brainer choice and I have no arguments against that so my next pack is going to be in the Ultra 200. The add-ons that I would like for the pack is the front utility pack instead of my zero waste fanny pack and a water bottle sleeve for easy access of water while hiking. And the total weight of this combination is 724 grams, 128 grams less than my Atom Plus and Fanny Pack combination. The total cost is $530 and if you then include the taxes and transports to Sweden we again end up close to 7000 Swedish crowns. Wow! I used the Big Sky Revolution 1.5 and it has served me well for the past two years. It is the perfect size, it is really easy to set up and I really enjoy the benefits of a freestanding tent, especially the space that you get inside for you and your gear. The only downside as I see it is the weight, 1340 grams including the bags and together with the 12 pegs if you want to use all of the Gaia points which I do recommend, you end up at a total weight of 1444 grams. That is not very heavy, but it is not ultra light. So I've been looking at tents to replace my revolution, but to be honest, there ain't many freestanding tents below one kilo with the pegs and the bags. The two that I have found and that is about the same size, freestanding and below one kilo is a Tartan Double Rainbow Li and the Sandpax Free Duo. And the one that I would pick is the free duo and for a couple of good reasons. First of all and most important when it comes to tents is safety. They must be able to handle the stronger winds and the bad weather and the free duo has thicker poles compared to the rainbow. 6.3 compared to 3.9 on the rainbow and they both have the same manufacturer Eastern Carbon. So the thicker 6.3 mm poles together with the H shaped solution the free duo will perform better in windy conditions. No doubt. On top of that Z-Packs also uses slightly thicker DCF on the outer 0.55 ounce per square yard compared to the 0.51 on the rainbow. The only downside as I see it is the doors and that they don't have a zipper. Perfect for reliability because zippers tend to break sooner or later but for windy conditions I think zippers are the better choice. The free duo weighs in at 852 grams in blue and uses 8 pegs maximum so the total weight including the bags and the pegs is 930 grams and that is 514 grams less than my Big Sky Revolution 1.5. <laughs> The cost for a free duo is $849 or about 11,000 Swedish crowns when you add the transport and the taxes to Sweden. If that is not crazy expensive, I don't know what is. If I would go ahead and buy all of this stuff, the total cost for this would be 25,000 Swedish crowns or about $2,000. Now the big difference is because I live in Sweden and I have to pay import taxes and transport and such. Expensive? But with these changes I would lower my base weight from 5.4 kilo to 4.8 kilo, a 600 gram save and that is great. But I would also add to the comfort and the warmth with a new pad and a new quilt. And I can sleep in comfort down to minus 1 degree celsius without adding any layers. 
beside the base layer. Is 600 grams worth that high price tag for a higher comfort and a lower base weight? Tell me your thoughts by leaving a comment. But if you ask me, don't tell my wife, okay? But I believe it is. Now, this is it. And if you liked today's episode, take a look at these two recommendations on my other videos. Also, do hit like, subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss out on any future content. I hope to see you again next week. But for now, take care, safe hiking and bye-bye.